day for the night. So welcome back everybody. Here it is Wednesday of Holy Week and we're back for a couple of my Lenten challenges trying to finish out the week. And uh, I'm here in the office, my own home office, because, well, I just wanted to be here for a change. It's a lot brighter, too, so I appreciate that. Anyway, uh, we have a couple of questions today. One I'm going to deal with directly has to do with the readings of the day. And on Holy Wednesday, we remember uh, part of the reading that happens in the upper room. For those of you who don't remember or may need a refresher, the upper room is where Jesus and his disciples had the Last Supper. That was when he basically made communion happen. That's when he decided to share his his body and blood in the form of the bread and the wine to make a covenant with his uh, disciples and all that. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. But during that meal, between everything else he was talking about, because he was giving kind of a last instructions and everything, right in the middle of it, right when they were about to really get into it, uh, just as he was passing the bread and wine around in our reading today, Judas who a lot of people remember as the one who betrayed him, Judas Iscariot, specifically, uh, is said to betray him. So the question I'm going to ask today around that reading is, why? What were the reasons that scripture gives for Judas to betray Jesus? And what were some of the historical reasons around that too? So I'm going to do my best. I have my laptop today, so we're going to use the uh, clock today and go. So why did Judas do it? Well, uh, straight from the start, a lot of people would say the devil made him do it. And I said it this way in the sense, the old quote, you know, that old saying, the devil made me do it in the sense of, well, I didn't do it myself. I was, to I was told to do bad things. And yes, it's recorded in a couple of the gospels that the devil did enter into his soul in that respect. But you can't give all the credit on old scratch, as he's called, because uh, the devil, yes, got in there and really guided him towards some evil stuff. But sometimes uh, the devil works best with those who are already willing. So it's the idea that not that Judas was worshiping the devil or any nonsense like that, but the idea that he already had a bit of conflict in his heart. So because of that, it was easier for uh, evil machinations to manipulate him. There's your big words for today. So anyway, uh, the three real big things that historically and scripturally pop up about why Judas did it. One says he was guided by greed, because if you remember yesterday's reading, sorry, Monday's reading about the wash, washing of the feet, uh, when uh, Mary did that for Jesus, Judas, the very first thing he said was, well, that was a waste of money. And a lot of this goes down the road that he kept the purse. He was the treasurer of their little group. So they think that greed guided him to do it because he wanted more cash from the leaders of the Jewish authority at the time, and they were going to pay him handsomely to get rid of Jesus. So he was like a mercenary. So that was one idea. Another idea that is handed out is that <clears throat> he was a zealot, and that means somebody who was really religiously uh, so, so invested in their faith and their people that he would fight for it. And when he saw Jesus as the Messiah, that, that sprung up a lot of things for him. That was the idea that, well, here's our Savior. But not just Savior in the sense of somebody who was going to redeem them, like, you know, bring them peace of heart and mind and bring them the things that they need, but also overthrow government. So he figured, well, this Roman occupation, just like the Egyptians before, this is what's going to happen. We're going to throw over the tables. There's going to be blood in the streets. This is a whole thing, and Jesus is going to do it. Then Palm Sunday happened. And Judas watched this guy ride in on a mule, and he was kind of like, this is not what I signed up for. So that was the other reason he felt betrayed, ironically. And the third reason was uh, another reason that's listed, is that he was worried. Because he figured that Jesus was causing a big hubbub, because during this week as well, he's in the temple flipping tables and getting mad at everybody. Like between Palm Sunday and all this, he's causing a real fuss and a real ruckus. And even the Jewish authorities, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, are telling him, shh, knock it off. The Romans are going to come down on us, and it's going to be a real problem. And Judas, being a good, faithful uh, person of the Jewish people and the Jewish faith, he basically said, you know what, they're right. Jesus, maybe we should calm down during Passover and do this after Passover when everybody's not around. You know, cause the insurrection then and then make change. So it's possible that it might have been for safety reasons. He didn't want another genocide, for lack of a better word, to happen amongst his people again, like Egypt before. And what better time to remember than during Passover? So 
It could have been A, he wanted to protect his people, B, he thought he wasn't going to get the war he wanted, or C, he was money grubby. But no matter what, these were all kind of sketchy reasons, and all of them involved either violence or greed, both of which are not nice things by any means. So for the devil to get involved, wouldn't be hard. Oof. Okay. Bit long today. <clears throat> Sorry, everyone. Seems these questions, since there's a Bible study that goes with them, they take a little more time to do. But that's basically the reason, guys. The reason Judas did it, aside from wickedness entering his heart, some wickedness was already there. And I'm not trying to say, I mean, he was a disciple. He was chosen. So he, he did the work. He did the homework. He was there by Jesus' side. But his interpretations of what Jesus was going to do, even Peter got it wrong from time to time. Even Peter denied him. But Judas, unfortunately, went the extra step. And that's why. So anyway, that's a little Bible study for today, for our readings for today and tomorrow. We'll have a look at Maundy Thursday. But for today, this is only part one. Now we're going to move on to the question of the day, part two.